And right here on my computer, you can see I am on WordCast Frame Validator here. This is where you can test out your URLs that you built your frames on. So right over here, this is just a preview of what our frame will look like. And this frame right now is connected to an NFT smart contract that I have. So right now it's connected to this smart contract here. You can see frames test. It's deployed on the base Sapolia testnet. I have 10 NFTs on here. Um, I've tested it out on a few. You can see we've minted four out of the 10 or sorry, five out of the 10. Uh, the next one is going to be friend number six here. You can see it's not owned by anyone. And if we come back to our frame, reload this page really quick. You can put in your frame URL here. You can load that frame. You can see what it's currently rendering, what its next frame is going to be. In this case, we're going to call our Mint API, which is going to call, again, our third web engine to mint this NFT for us. And you can see here the status of your frame. So you can test it in here before you actually go out and you know cast it on Farcaster. Uh, right now I have a image ratio. I just uploaded the wrong ratio for my image, which is why this is a red dot here, but that should be okay here. And all we're going to do here is with frames, you can add up to four buttons down here. We have one button, which is a mint NFT. So if I click on this here, what this is actually going to do is again, make that API call to third webs engine. It's going to mint us an NFT. And right here you can see once that happens, it says, congrats, the NFT was sent to your wallet. Now, if we come back to our NFT contract here, we'll give it a moment because this is actually going through engine right now and it's queued up and being sent and minted. So once that's minted, we should see this update here to the same wallet address that I have up here because uh, this is my Farcaster wallet here. And you can see right there, we have friend number six and the address has been updated matching the previous two right over here. Again, that is the Farcaster wallet. So again, you can create these really cool experiences with Farcaster frames. There's a lot of ideas going out, concepts that people are trying out. It's really exciting to see people utilizing decentralized social media platforms like Farcaster to create these unique experiences. But again, this is just going to show you one, how to build a simple frame and how to add a NFT minting capability to your frame using ThirdWeb's engine. Hey everyone, Sean Wataza here back with another video. And in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is building our very own Farcaster frame. And not only are we gonna be building a Farcaster frame, we're gonna be building a frame that allows you to mint an NFT utilizing ThirdWeb's engine. So an overview of what we're gonna be doing in this video, we'll jump in, deploy our very own smart contract for the NFT that we would like users to claim through our Farcaster caster frame then we'll go through some of the things that we're going to use to build out the frame and then we'll jump into our code editor here and build out our very own Farcaster frame, which is pretty easy to do. And we'll add in some Web3 functionality, again, using ThirdWeb's engine to be able to mint an NFT. So the first thing we're gonna do to start off this project here is to actually deploy a smart contract of the NFTs that we want to allow the user to mint here in our frame. So I'm gonna come back to ThirdWeb here. I'm gonna go to the contracts tab and I'm gonna hit deploy a contract. And right over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy a ERC721 contract or an NFT drop contract. Uh, you can deploy any contract that you want. You can do a token, uh, you can do an addition drop, which is an ERC1155. You could do a token drop as well, which is an ERC20 token. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity here, we're just gonna do an ERC721. We'll go through the areas of the code that you may need to change depending on the type of contract that you deploy. So I'm gonna select NFT drop here. Again, this is an ERC721. 21 a standard contract i'm going to click on deploy now in the top right and i'm going to give this a name so i'm going to call this farcaster frame here uh, frame nft and then we'll just say ff nft as a symbol you can add a description image you can configure these parameters to your liking i'm just going to scroll down here and i'm going to hit this drop down and this is where you can select the network or chain you want to deploy your contract to. So this is going to be the chain that your NFT lives on uh, when someone mints the NFT. Now you can search any EVM compatible chain here. You just need to search its name here and you'll find all the different chains here. You just select it. I'm going to use the base Apolia testnet here. And once you select that chain, you're going to just click deploy now and you'll get a pop up for a transaction here. You can hit confirm. You'll get another pop-up for a signature request to add this contract to your third web dashboard. So we're going to sign that. And once that has been successfully deployed, you'll be redirected to your contract dashboard here. You can see we have our Farcaster Frames NFT, the network or chain that we deployed it on, and we have our contract address, which is what we're going to need for our frames. Now, one thing we need to do here is actually prep our NFTs. So we need to lazy mint our NFTs here to our contract. 
So I'm going to come over to the NFT tabs here on the left and we're going to, you can single upload and you can basically choose a name and image and add descriptions for all the NFTs that you want to add to your contract. But I do have some metadata already built. So I'm going to do a batch upload here and I'm going to grab the JSON files of the metadata for those NFTs, drop them in here. You can see that I have 15 NFTs that I'm going to upload. I'm going to hit next and I'm going to just reveal them upon mint. You can do a delayed reveal too and have a different image and reveal them all at once if you choose to do so. I'm going to upload these 15 NFTs here. We're going to get a transaction here that we need to confirm. So I'll confirm that. And there you go. We now have our NFTs lazy minted to our smart contract. You can see the owners of it are these null addresses here. But as people claim the NFTs, they'll be sent to the owner's wallet. Next thing we're going to do is take a look at Engine. So if you haven't used Engine before, we'll actually throw a guide and a tutorial video down in the description below. You can follow that guide and tutorial on how to set up Engine, how to set up your own instance of Engine. But basically what we're going to do here is we need to come to our Engine. So over here, I have a instance of Engine running here. And this is basically going to be our HTTP backend where we're going to make our Mint API request to and Engine is going to take care of all the blockchain transactions uh, behind the scenes for us. Now, the one thing that we need is a backend wallet and this backend wallet allows us to perform blockchain actions on behalf of whoever is claiming the NFT. So essentially what we're going to be doing is this backend wallet here will have some funds in it. So this is my backend wallet here. I have some funds in it. And when we make this API call to engine, it's going to say, hey, this wallet here go ahead and mint a new NFT, but send it to this wallet address. And that wallet address will be the wallet address of the person, the Farcaster account of the person who is minting the NFT. Now we are going to need this wallet address here uh, because we're going to make sure that our NFT is only claimable from this wallet address. We only want our backend wallet to be able to call the function, the claim function on our contract. And so that way no one can go directly to the contract and claim these NFTs for themselves. But of course, you can configure your NFT contract the way you want. Maybe you want people to be able to come manually into the contract and mint the NFT. However you want to configure it, you can do it that way. This way that I'm doing it is only so that the end so that the NFT can only be claimed directly through the Farcaster frame. And the only wallet that should be able to mint it is this backend wallet here once the request is made to it. So if I take that backend wallet, I come back to my contract here. I need to set up my claim condition. So on the left hand navigation, there's this claim condition here and we're going to add a phase and we're going to do allow list only because we only want to allow the, again, that backend wallet to claim an NFT. And what we need to do here is you can name the phase when it's going to start, how many NFTs are going to be in here. So we can say 15, uh, they're going to be free. And what we're going to do here is edit the claimer snapshot. So when you open this up here, you can download an example CSV file, which will allow you to set up the allow list. And I'll open up an example right here. So right over here, I just opened up this uh, CSV file in VS Code here. And you can see this is how we need to set it up, the address that we're going to allow list to claim, and then the amount that we want to be able, we want to allow that wallet to claim. So in this case, 15 would be the max for our backend wallet, which is this address here. And this is what we're going to give to ThirdWeb. So if we come back over here, we're just going to take that file. And again, this is uh, that example snapshot right over here. We'll just take that file, drop it in. We can see that it's our wallet address. Max claimable is 15. And then the price and currency is just going to default to what we have set out over here. So I'm going to hit next. So again, the price and the currency will default to these here. If you have them at default, you can edit those if you want specific uh, currencies and certain amounts to be able to claim. But again, we're just going to make it free to claim. And once all of that is set, we're going to hit save phase. We'll have to confirm this transaction here. Once that is successful, there you have it. We are done now with our smart contract for our NFT that we're going to allow people to claim in our frame. Now, the next thing I want to go over is just a little bit about what frames are. So again, frames, uh, we can look at Farcaster's documentation here 
And we have our standard frame here, our standard OG frame. Think of it as when you post a link to like social media or anything, you normally get the metadata of the link along with like an image. And those are all stored in the, uh, the in meta tags in the head tags of your HTML file. Now, frames kind of takes that same information. What it'll be able to do is create a frame out of that. And what we'll also be able to do is add things like buttons and we'll be able to, in a way, create our own little application within that frame. So if we go to the frame specifications here, you can see we can create a frame which shows an image and a button. And when they hit the button, we can actually toggle what is shown in the kind of the frame thumbnail or image section of the frame. We can also add buttons and depending on which button is pressed, we can navigate the user through an, an application like UI where they can answer polls. We can hit buttons to open certain pages. We can also make buttons in this case to mint NFTs. And we're going to be able to create that again, all with the creating meta tags within the head section or the head tags of our HTML. Down here, you can see constructing the frame it requires three main things. We're going to have to set up our meta tags like this here. We're going to need an FC frame, an FC frame image, and an OG image as well too. This is just the fallback for if the frame isn't supported. This is kind of like what you would normally see in your social media post. On top of that though, we do have some optional properties here that we're gonna be using like a post URL, a button as well. You can also add input text areas if you wanted to do like a form or something like that. So again, with all of this, we're gonna be able to add these little meta tags into that head tag of our HTML file and be able to build out our custom Farcaster frames using this. Now on top of ThirdWeb's engine, we are going to be using something called Nanar, and we'll be using Nanar's API to one, validate the message that we need in order to interact with buttons and everything on frame. And you can also use this to create unique features and everything for your frames. You can check if a user has followed you. You can check if a user has liked or recasted certain cast. So you can do a lot of creative things in here. We're not gonna be doing that in this video. We'll make a video later on for those things. But what we're gonna be doing here is looking at the frames API here under the under that with the validate, which is gonna validate a frame action against the Farcaster hub. And this is gonna be an easy API call here that we can create to again, to just validate the, the message that we need in order to create a action on the button. So you'll have to grab an API key from Nanar. We'll add a link down in the description below where you can grab your very own. And on top of that, again, we're going to be using a third web engine. So if you don't have an instance of engine, you can create a managed instance here where you can sign up. It's $99 a month, or you can host your own instance of engine connected to the engine dashboard here by importing it and you'll be able to use the tools and follow along with what we're doing. So we have all of that set. Next thing we're gonna do is build out our project here. So I'm gonna open up my term. So in my terminal here, we're just gonna create a new next app. So I'm gonna run MPX uh, FF frame. So I'm just gonna run MPX create next app and I'm gonna name this project F frame NFT. In here, we are gonna use TypeScript in this tutorial. So I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say no to the ESLint, no to C uh, Tailwind CSS. Yes to the source directory. We're not gonna use app router in here and I'm gonna say no to customizing the default. Once that's done, we'll change into our project folder and open this up in our code editor. First thing we're gonna do here in our source folder, we're going to create a new folder and we'll call this config. And in that we'll create a new config.ts file. And in this config.ts file, we are going to export our config here for for Nanar, so we'll say Nanar. This is where we'll hold our API key and we're gonna store our API key in an env variable here. So we'll just say, uh, this should be API key, API key, there we go. We're also gonna have our contract address, which we'll store in our, if I can spell right here, <laughs> contract address. So this is going to actually be a, next public and then we'll say contract address we'll also need our host url which is something that we are going to need to provide 
We're also gonna use our host URL, which we are going to use also throughout our application when we're building out our frame. So we'll need the URL that we actually host this frame on. Then we're gonna have our third web configs here. We're gonna have one uh, for our chain ID. This is gonna be the chain that we have our contract deployed to, and we need to make sure that we get a number. We're gonna get the number of the chain ID that we post into our .env variable, .env file here as well. So our environment variable, next public chain ID. Then we need a few things for engine. And engine, we need one, our engine URL, which uh, we are gonna do process.env.thirdwebengine URL. We're going to need our backend wallet, which will be our third web engine wallet. And then we're gonna need our access token for engine as well, which we're gonna store in our third web engine access token. So now that we have our config here set up, we're going to start building out the basics of our frame here. So in our files, if we come down into the pages folder here, we're gonna to go to the underscore document.tsx file. So in this document, underscore document.tsx file, again, this is where we're gonna add those meta tags into the head tag here. So let's just uh, open up this head tag here. And inside of that, we're gonna add our meta tags. So if we go back to the frame documentation here, we have our required properties, which we need these three keys here, and those are gonna be our meta tag properties. So the first one is FC frame. So coming back to our code editor here, in this head tag, we're going to set the meta tag property to FC frame, and the content is gonna be VNX. So if we look here, Again, we can set the uh, release date, but the only valid version right now is V next. Next we need to do is set the frame image and it has to be the aspect ratio of 1.19 by one or a one by one aspect ratio. So in my code editor here, I'm going to, in my public folder, just drag an image that I have. So I have this image right here, which is a 1.91 by one aspect ratio here and I'm going to create a meta tag for that with the property of FC frame image. And we're gonna set the content to that image. So it's going to be our, if we go to config, oops, dot host URL, and then it'll be slash, and we have sample image.png. So sample image.png and we'll just import our config here and make sure we close off this meta tag here come back here and then the next thing we need to do is also set an og image as well which is going to be the same thing we're just going to give it the key of the property of this og image so we come here let's just copy this paste that and then this is going to be uh OG image and it will make it the same image but if you want to make it something different you can make it something different here cool so the next thing we're going to do is add a couple more properties here from frames we're going to add the post URL this is going to be the URL for our API request to mint our NFT and then we're going to add a button as well a button as well and you can see here you can contain um zero to four buttons. So we're just gonna name the index of the button here that we want it to be. And we'll go back here to our code editor. So we're gonna add a couple more meta tags here. And this one's gonna have the property, oops, of FC frame and then post URL. We'll give it its content. And then the next one is going to be, have the property of FC, and make sure I spell that right, frame. And then it's gonna be button, and then we're gonna say index of one. And then this will have a content as well. So the button here, we're gonna have it say a mint NFT. So we'll just say mint NFT. This will be the text that shows on that button. And then the content for our post URL here is going to be, again, the, the pathway to our mint API. So this is going to be our URL. So we'll say config.host URL. 
and it will be a slash and we're going to put this in our API folder and then we're going to call it min. Right? And then the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to add a OG property meta tag here. So property and then this is going to be OG and then we're going to give it a title and this content here is going to equal. We'll just have it say uh, third web tutorial YouTube tutorial and then we'll say uh, Varcaster frame. Cool. So again, these are going to be the components of building out a Farcaster frame. It's these meta tags within the head tag of our HTML file. And what we're really doing here is setting our frame, setting our frame image here, setting our frames post URL, and then setting our frame to have a button, which is going to call that post URL and mint our NFT for us. Now, if we take a look back at our example frame, again, this is going to be the image. This is going to be the button here. So let me just load this again. That says mint NFT. You can see the next frame. What happens is when we hit that button, it's going to call our API to mint our NFT. So again, we take a look at the example frame here that we looked at earlier. We have the frame button, which has the text of mint NFT. We have the image set up. And again, you can make multiple buttons and everything input text fields if you wanted to with those frames. Now this acts just like, again, if you had one of those posted a link on social media, this link here up top of this image, if we click on it, will still bring us to our actual website that is linked to this. Now, now I only have some text here that's showing. So what you can do is actually build this on top of your existing web app, or you can build out your own little web page here that you want to people to be redirected to when, when they actually click on the link and get redirected to the URL of your actual web page here. So in here, I mean, we can create one. We're just going to create a new page here. We'll create a new file called mint.tsx and you can create your own little uh, page here of whatever you want to display or your own web app. Uh, we'll just display a H1 header here that says third web engine forecaster frame. But again, this is where you can build out your own page and everything. When someone actually clicks that link on Farcaster, it'll redirect them to this and we'll set it up here. Next thing we're gonna do is build out a file that we can update what our frame is going to look like because our frame is going to update our button here. So if we go back here, come back to our validator. Let me just load this one more time. Again, when we hit mint NFT, right? It mints the NFT and then the text of our button here actually changes and tells the person or the user if it actually went through or not. Uh, let me just refresh this page here real quick. Load this. So again, when we hit mint NFT, um, once the NFT goes or the mint goes through successfully, it says congrats, the NFT was sent to your wallet. So to update that text, what we're going to do is create a new file that we can compute and change the things like the text button. We can even change the image. We can change whatever we want in this frame here. Uh, depending on what happens through our app, through our little workflow of our frame. So coming back here, I'm going to create a new file in my source folder here. Call this utils. And then I'm going to create a new file within that. This one is going to be called computehtml.ts. So in this compute-html.ts file, this is where we're going to take in our compute HTML parameters. We're going to take things like content, an image path and we can change what we want our frame to look like. So maybe we want to change the image path to something else when someone hits a button. Maybe we want to change the content of the button to show different text, which is what we're going to do here in this case. So again, you can configure this to change how you want. Uh, and we're going to be using again this compute HTML and passing it the image path and content so that it can make the necessary changes depending on the interactions that someone makes on our Farcaster frame. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build that API request to mint the NFT. Now we do need to do a couple things first. Uh, one, we need to validate that message again when someone interacts with that button to take action to mint the NFT. We're going to be using Nanar for that. And then we need to create our API request to ThirdWeb's engine to mint the NFT. So in my files here, I'm going to come in to my source folder here, create a new folder. I'm going to call this classes and in classes, we'll first create our new file here and we're going to call this warpcast.ts. And this is where we're going to build our 
nanar api request to validate the message so in here we're going to create a variable we'll call this api url this is going to be uh, api.nanar.com then we're going to create our schema for our validate message so we're going to create a validate message schema which is going to equal a z dot a z dot object and we're going to create our object here um, what i'm going to do here is open up my terminal and we're going to run yarn add zld here awesome and then we're going to import that and this is where we'll give our structure of our validate message here which is going to look like this so we have validate our action and we're going to have our interactor, which is going to give us the FID, which is a unique identifier that Farcaster uses. Well, let me just fix this here. Uh, we have the username, which is your username for Farcaster. And then you have your custody address, which is going to be the address or the wallet address that you get when you create an account using Farcaster. We also have the tapped button here, uh, which is going to give us the oops the Q index. So what we'll do here is we'll create our own class. So we'll call this warpcast. And in this class, we're going to, we're going to make our API call to Nanar to validate the message. So over here, we'll create a private static get, which we're going to compute our default, which say default header for our request here. And this will return our, what our header will look like. So we're gonna say API key will be our config dot nanar dot API key. Make sure we import config here. And then we'll have a content type, which will be application JSON. We'll also make sure our API key is as a string. And then this way too, if you wanted to, again, make more requests uh, using Nanar to check things, if a user has liked your cast or if a user has recasted your cast, uh, you can use that here and then you can make multiple calls within here. Uh, again, all we're gonna be doing in this tutorial is validating a message. So in here, we'll create our public static async function here for validating our message, which will take our message bytes, which is gonna be a string. And we're going to make our call to our URL. So we'll get our URL. Um, so we'll create our URL. And what this will look like is if we come back here, we'll go to Nanar. Again, under frames and validate frame here, we're going to be using this here, which is the V2 Farcaster frame validate. So again, we'll take our API URL from up here. We'll say slash V2 Farcaster frame validate. We'll get our response here, which we were going to await and fetch. We'll use our URL. We'll give it our headers here, uh, which is going to be our warpcast.compute default header. We have our method here, which is going to be a post. And then we have our body here. And what we need to do here is provide it with our message, our message bytes. So we'll do a straight JSON stringify. And then in here, we're going to have our message bytes in hex. And we're going to provide it with our message bytes. Then we'll get our data here. We'll await our response and we will get the JSON. Then we will get our response and parse through. And then parse through our response, get our data, and then return our data and our action. Because again, remember, um, all we need from this validate message schema, which is what we're going to parse through here, is our action here, um, right over here. And what we're also going to do from this validate message is get the custody address. And this is going to be the address that we are going to mint the NFT to when someone interacts with this frame. Next, we're going to work on our engine here. So in our source folder here, I'm going to create a new folder called API. 
And in that API folder, I'm going to create a new file called fetcher.ts. And this is what's going to, this is going to be our uh, mint request here to mint our NFT. So we're going to create a new mint response schema here. Make sure we import that. And then all, all our mint response schema is going to be is we're going to get back a result. And in that result, we're going to get back a queued ID. We'll make sure that's a string. Then we're going to export our HTTP request to mint. So we'll call it HTTP mint. Uh, it's going to be an async function here. We're going to take our receiver, which is going to be a string of the address that we need to send the NFT to. And in here, we're going to make our request to engine to mint our NFT. So we come back to our engine dashboard here, right over here. Now this is going to be dependent on the contract and everything that you deployed, but you can take a look at the Explorer tab here. And I'm going to scroll down and I deployed an NFT drop, which is an ERC721. So that's what we're going to be using in this tutorial example. But if you deployed an ERC1155 or an ERC20, you'll choose the corresponding type of contract that you deployed. But in the ERC721, we're going to look for the post request to claim to, which is this one right here. And you can see right here, this is what our URL is going to have to look like. Uh, we're going to have our contract. Uh, slash contract slash the chain that we're using slash the contract address slash ERC 20 uh, 721 and then slash claim two. So with that, we're going to come back to our code editor here. We're going to get our response here. We're going to await and fetch. Oh, I just noticed that I spelled contract address wrong here. So we're going to get our um, URL here again it's going to be our engine URL slash contract slash the third web chain ID slash the contract address which is going to be the contract address we deployed slash ERC 721 slash claim 2. Now in here we have our method which is going to be post we have our headers here this is what we need to so this is going to be um, content type application slash JSON we have our authorization which is going to be a bearer and we're going to provide it with our third web access token or engine access token. And then we're going to have our back end wallet, back end wallet address, which is going to be our third web engine wallet. Then in our body, we need to provide it with the receiver of the NFT and then the quantity uh, that we're sending them. So right here, we're going to put in json.stringify and we need to give it the receiver who is going to be the receiver. And then we'll just do two lowercase here. Make sure we lowercase our address. And then we have the quantity, which we're going to provide it with a string of the quantity, which is going to be one. Then in here, we're going to get our results, which we are going to await our response dot json. And we're going to return our mint response schema and we're going to parse it for our results. So again, we want the results here and we want to make sure we get back our queued ID. So that is going to be our, again, our request here to, um, and that is going to be our API call here to third web engine to mint our NFT. Next thing we're going to do here is in our classes, we're going to create one more file here. We're going to call this third web engine.ts and we're just going to create a quick class here for third web engine which is going to call the mint here the mint function the mint request that we just created so we're going to create a class called third web engine we're going to create a function called mint which is going to take the receiver and we're just going to call the http mint pass it a receiver and then get returned our response here and now that we have that we can now create our mint api here so in our pages folder under the api folder here we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this mint.ts and for this we're going to create our request body for warp cast schema here which is going to again be our trusted uh, which is going to give us the back the message bytes which we are going to have to validate uh, let me just import 
Uh, we're going to use next API request and response, and then we're going to export uh, default async function for handler here, which will be our request, which will be a next API request and our response, which will be a next API response. Now we're also going to, we're going to install yarn add next JS cores here, close this. And the first thing we're gonna do is await next cores and oops, we'll import that. And this is going to have our request and response and the methods. We're going to say get and post. Oops. And we'll set the origin to any here. We'll check if our request method is a post method. If it's not a post method, then we'll return a status 400 and saying that it is the invalid method. Then we'll run a try catch here. And then for the catch, what we're gonna do is we don't want to post an error on the, the frame or anything, uh, but what we'll do is we'll just change the text of the button saying that there was an error and something went wrong. So what we'll do here is we'll return a response of status 200. Uh, and what we're going to send here is we're going to use our compute HTML and we're going to provide it with an image path, which is going to be to our sample image still. So if you have another image that maybe you want to have an error image or something, you can put it in here, but I only have one image. So I'm going to just send it to the same sample image here. And in the content, this is what the button is going to say. We'll just say uh, something went wrong. Please try again. Now in the try here, what we're going to do is one, validate the message. And then two, once the message is validated, we can get the custody address and then mint the NFT to that custody address. So we'll get our trusted data here, which is going to be our request body warp cast schema, which we're going to parse through and get our message bytes here. Then we're going to create a function called action, which is going to await and we're going to use our warp cast validate message and we're going to pass it our trusted data dot message bytes. What that is going to do is again, call our warp cast here and call the validate message function, which is going to use Nanar to validate the frame, which is going to use Nanar to validate the message. Once we have the message validated, we're going to await and say a uh, third web engine, and we're going to mint and we're going to mint using the action, right? Cause what we're going to get returned here is the, this here, this action, what we're going to get returned here is this scheme message schema here. So in action, again, we can get the uh, interactor and the custody address. So that's what we're doing here is we're getting action um, from here. Uh, we're getting the interactor and then we're getting the custody address. And with that custody address, we can then mint the NFT called the mint function, which is our third web uh, class here calling this mint function, which is going to call the HTTP mint function that we created here, which makes the request to third web's engine to mint the NFT using that uh, address that we provided it. And then from there, we're going to return a response of status 200. And similar to how we did the catch, what we're going to do is compute our HTML here provide it with the image path. Maybe we can do a success image or something like that. And then we can just say, uh, congrats, you have minted a new NFT. And there you go, that is our frame. Now, in order to actually post a frame on Forecaster or Warpcast, you do have to publish this frame, get the URL and put the URL into your cast. Now you do, like we did earlier here, you can use this frame validator. Oops. You can use this frame validator and we'll drop a link to this down in the description below, but you can just put in the URL to your frame here and you can test it out in here and make sure it works prior to actually casting it out. So the next thing we're going to do is actually deploy this using Vercel. We'll go through really quick how to set up everything with Vercel, like your environment variables, and we'll test out our frame here in the frame validator. So coming back to our application here, I'm just going to open up my terminal 
And I'm gonna run yarn build really quick just to make sure everything's good. All right, then I'm gonna run Vercel. And yes, we're going to set up and deploy this. Uh, I'm gonna deploy it to my account here. Uh, is it an existing project? No. Uh, we're gonna name this F frame NFT and directly where it's located. No. And we can see that is inspecting and building. And I just remembered one thing uh, right when I hit um, deploy to Vercel, uh, we need to set up our next config file here. So uh, we're gonna come to our next.config.mjs. Actually, I'm gonna rename this uh, just to .js here. And we're going to set up our next.config file here to have the redirect our source. We're gonna set our source and then we're gonna set the destination here to the slash mint to redirect uh, users to that slash mint page where again, you can create uh, your page however you wanna make it. Um, but that's what, what people will see if they actually go to the URL. Uh, and then we'll send react restrict mode to true here. Uh, so you can do that if you're gonna be redirecting again, setting that destination to that mint.tsx page. Um, and let me just redeploy this again one more time. So run for sale. And let's just open this up and take a look at the inspector. So right here, you can see that uh, our build is going through. And while that's going through, let's set up the environment variables here for our application. So coming back to our project here, uh, I'm gonna in Vercel go to the settings tab here. I'm gonna go to environment and variables. And in here, we're gonna have to set up the environment variables that we had in our, if we take a look, uh, our config file. All these environment variables here that we're gonna need, we're gonna provide it to our environment variables there. So. We're gonna get name our API key. We'll then add another. We'll get our next public contract address. Now next public, of course, is saying that this is going to uh, be expose the values to the browser. Uh, so you do wanna make sure that you preference next public to variables that you're okay with exposing. Uh, then we have the host URL. Then we have our chain ID. Then we have our third web engine URL. We have our third web engine wallet, and we have our third web engine access token. So what you'll do here is you'll fill out all of these values for your environment variables here. You'll need that in order to, when you publish your frame, that we have all the proper variables that we can use throughout. So all you're gonna do is get your environment variables here, put in the values, so get your name, our API key, your next public contract, uh, your contract address, uh, your host URL, wherever you have it uh, hosted to, and then your chain ID. You can get the chain ID if you don't know what it is. You can go to thirdweb.com slash chainless and you can uh, search your chain ID. So like in our case, my case here, I used a uh, base Sapolia testnet. And in here you have all the information. You can just get the chain ID here. And then that's gonna be the chain ID that you use uh, for that variable. And then you'll do the same thing for your engine URL, your engine backend wallet. So if you are using engine, you can get your backend wallet over here under the permissions. You can get access to your access tokens, just create an access token, which gives you API access to your engine instance. And that's, you just fill all of that in, save it. Um, I'm gonna do that now, and then I'll come back in my deployments tab here in just a bit. All right, so I came back to our deployment here for our Frame, you can see here we have a preview, which is our third up engine forecaster frame here, which is that text that we added. I'm just gonna push this to production here and get a URL for it, which is gonna be this guy right here. So we're gonna promote to production here. And then I'm gonna take that URL, go back into my environment variables and add that last piece in, and then we'll test out our frame. So there we go, we can see our, if we click on here, it brings us to, if we look at the URL here, the f the f frame nft dot app slash mint because again we're looking at the regular web page, oops, the regular web page version of it, which is just going to show our h1 header here that we got. So if I copy that URL here, we're going to come back to our settings one more time, set the environment variable, and I'm going to set it for our next public host URL, and then we'll jump back into the frame validator to test this out. So we're back in our frame validator here. You can see we just got to put in our frame URL. So I'm going to put in my fframenft.forcell.app 
app here. We're gonna hit load. And you can see here that we're loading out our frame, a preview of it, which we have our image here. We have our mint button. You can see it's currently rendering out the URL here. And you can see here the next frame is gonna call our API mint to mint the NFT. So what we can do here is you can see here that all of our things are passing. We have our frame, we have our image, we have our post URL, we have a button here, which is of title NF, uh, mint NFT, it's a post type, and we have our OG image and our OG title here as well. So we can test this out. Let me actually grab, uh, bring up our engine dashboard so we can look at it. So we should see our engine requests come in right over here. So what we'll do here on our frame validator example is we'll mint an NFT. So we'll hit mint NFT, the button here on our frame. We'll wait, give it a moment. And you can see here, if we come back to our transactions, you can see that our transaction was just sent 11 seconds ago. It's been mined. And if we take a look at our NFT contract, uh, I think this is it here. Yep. Right over here, you can see that we now have that NFT sent to us and it is the wallet ending in 83AF, which is my Farcaster wallet. We can try it again. We'll hit mint NFT. We'll come over to our third of dashboard. That way, this time you can see it. There you go. The transaction pops up. It's sent. Engine is handling everything for the blockchain transaction behind the scenes. Once that's been mined, we'll give it a second here. We can come back to our contract here and NFT number two should also be minted. There you go to the same wallet address. And there you have it. You built your own NFT minting Farcaster frame using ThirdWeb's engine. You can build a whole bunch of cool things utilizing frames. And in tandem with using ThirdWeb's engine, you can do a whole bunch of on-chain actions and interact with the blockchain as well. So I hope you folks enjoyed this video. You found some value in it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on more tutorial videos just like this. If you have any questions or you need any support, we'll drop a link down in the description below to our support team. You can open up a ticket and they'll be happy to help you out and answer any of your questions. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video and until next time, see ya.